it's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Vroom, vroom. Here we go, chapter nine, lesson number one, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So, first of all, what is meant by each of these words? Well, displacement, first of all. Imagine if you have an object, that object is going to be at a rest and it's going to be at a starting position. The object, vroom vroom, will then start to move away from that position. And really it's going to be moving a certain distance and it's going to be moving in a certain direction. And we call that the displacement. The displacement is really the distance away from the origin where it starts, but it also has a direction. The displacement will depend on the time. So obviously after one second or two seconds, three seconds, the distance is going to be different, which is why we write X, the displacement changes with respect to time. Velocity, what is meant by that? Well, if you think about this object that is moving, it is going to be moving with a certain speed. And once again, that speed is going to have a direction and we call it therefore the velocity. And if you think about it, because it is changing, because the displacement is changing, there is a rate at which it changes. So it's the rate of change of the displacement with respect to time. Because of that, we can say that the velocity equals, well, it's going to be the rate of change of the displacement with respect to time. So we differentiate the displacement with respect to time. So the velocity equals dx by dt. And it is measured in meters per second or ms to the minus one. And finally, the acceleration, what is meant by that? Well, that is the rate of change of the velocity with respect to time. It is how quickly the velocity is changing. So really, it's the rate at which an object changes its speed. Because of that, we can say that the acceleration is equal to, it's the rate of change of velocity, so dv by, with respect to time, so dt. So the acceleration equals dv by dt. And the acceleration is measured in meters per second per second, or m slash s squared, or ms to the minus two. Yeah. So basically, if we are given the displacement, we can differentiate that to get the velocity. If we're given the velocity, we can differentiate that to get the acceleration. If we're given the acceleration, we can integrate that to get back to the velocity. And if we're given the velocity, whoop, we can integrate that to get the displacement. Let's try some examples with that then. Just remember, if you're given the displacement, you can differentiate to get the velocity. If you're given velocity, you can differentiate to get the acceleration. Example one, a car is traveling along a straight road. The distance x meters traveled in t seconds is x equals 10 t, take away five t squared. Find its velocity when t equals 0 0.5 seconds. So we know the distance is x equals 10t, take away 5t squared. We want to get the velocity. How do we go about getting the velocity? Ian, what do we do? Perfect, you differentiate. So to get the velocity, you differentiate x with respect to time. So it's dx by dt. If you differentiate that, Ian, you get 10 minus 10t. Perfect, you get 10 minus 10t. We are wanting to find the velocity when t equals 0 0.5, so replace t with 0 0.5. If you do that, then you can say the velocity equals 10 take away 10 times 0 0.5, which works out to be, you got it, 10 take away 5, which is 5 meters per second. Yeah. Example two, a car is traveling along a straight road. Vroom, vroom. Its velocity v meters per second at t seconds is v equals 10 plus 6 t squared, take away t cubed. Find the acceleration when t equals 3 seconds. So we're given the velocity is 10 plus 6 t squared, take away t cubed. How do we go about getting the acceleration? Heather, what would we do? Perfect, you would differentiate. Well done. So to get the acceleration, differentiate velocity. So because we're differentiating the velocity with respect to time, it is dv by dt. If you differentiate that, you end up with, good, you would get 12t take away 3t squared. We want the acceleration when t is 3. So after 3 seconds, t equals 3. Therefore, you can say the acceleration would be equal to, and you would have 12 times 3 take away 3 times 3 squared. 
Work that out, that gives you 36 take away 27, which is 9 metres per second per second. Woo. Example 3. A model train runs on straight tracks. Its displacement x metres from the signal at O after t seconds is given by x equals 1 take away 4t plus t cubed, where t is bigger than 0. Find part A, an expression for its velocity and acceleration at time t, B, its displacement velocity and acceleration at t equals 1, and part C, the time at which the velocity is 8 metres per second. So for part A, what are we doing then? Well, we want an expression for the velocity and the acceleration. How do we do that if we are given the displacement? Where would we go, James? Good, you would differentiate. If you are given the displacement, you differentiate to get the velocity. So the velocity will equal differentiating this with respect to t. You would have dx by dt. And that would equal, say it with me, negative 4 plus 3t squared. Brilliant. So that is an expression for the velocity. For the acceleration, how do you get that? Good. To get the acceleration, you differentiate the velocity. So that will be differentiating the velocity, dv, again with respect to time, with respect to t. So that will equal, if you differentiate this, what would you get, Sam? Brilliant. You would end up with 6t. Fantastic. So that's part A. We have an expression for both the velocity and the acceleration. Part B. Calculate its displacement, velocity, and acceleration at t equals 1. Well, we know already from the question that the displacement equals 1 take away 4t plus t cubed. If t equals 1, well, we can replace t with 1, so we would get 1 take away 4 times 1 plus 1 cubed. If you work that out, you get 1 take away 4 plus 1, which works out to be negative 2. It is a distance that is measured at metres, so you'd have negative 2 metres. Because you get that negative, what does the negative mean if you pictured that Perfect. It would mean that the train would be travelling two metres to the left of the origin in the negative direction. After that, getting the velocity, well again, we just worked out in part A, the velocity equals negative 4 plus 3t squared. If t equals 1, you replace t with 1, so it's negative 4 plus 3 times 1 squared. That works out to be negative 4 plus 3, which is obviously a negative 1. The units will be metres per second. Once again, you've got that negative. What does the negative mean? Well, that means it's going to be moving to the left on your x-axis. It'll be moving in that negative direction. And finally, the acceleration. We just worked out in part A, the acceleration equals 6t. If once again, t equals 1. We can sub that in, so it's 6 times 1, which is obviously 6. And the units, what would they be? Brilliant. It would be 6 metres per second per second. Part C, to finish this question off, calculate the time at which the velocity is 8 metres per second. So we know already the velocity from part A, it equals dx by dt, which is negative 4 plus 3t squared. That's what we worked out in part A. We know now that the velocity is 8 metres per second, so your negative 4 plus 3t squared must equal 8, because the velocity is 8. So this equals 8. Solve that to find t. What would you do first? Good. If you add 4 to both sides, 3t squared would equal 12. Divide both sides by 3, t squared would equal 4. That means t would equal the square root of 4, which is going to give you plus or minus 2 seconds. So calculate the time at which the velocity is 8 metres per second. Well, you get an answer of either 2 or negative 2 seconds. However, if you go back and read the question, it told you that t is bigger than 0. And because t is bigger than 0, the only answer will be 2. Perfect. So t equals 2 seconds. Yeah. Example 4. A particle starts from rest and at time t seconds the velocity is given by v equals 3t squared plus 4t take away 1. Determine the displacement velocity and acceleration at time t equals 4 seconds. So how do we go about doing this then? So we've got the velocity and we want to first of all get the displacement. How do we go about getting the displacement? What could we do, Matthew? 
Perfect. If you've got the velocity to get the displacement, you have to integrate. Bum, bum, bum. So we would integrate the velocity with respect to t. Which means then we are going to be integrating the 3t squared plus 4t take away 1. Again, with respect to t. Integrating that then, that would give us 3t cubed over 3, which is the same as t cubed. We'd also get 4t squared over 2, which is the same as 2t squared. And we'd get the negative t. However, because we are integrating, what do we need in the end? Plus c! You got it! That is what you need on the end. Make sure you do not forget. Really, we're wanting to determine the displacement velocity and acceleration when t equals 4. But if we sub in t equals 4, we're going to get something plus c. So really, we need to find out what c is going to be. And what we need to do is we need to think about this. We have the particle that's starting from rest. So really, at the very, very start, the time is going to be zero. And really, your displacement, well, the object won't have started moving as well, so the displacement will also be zero. So what you do is you can replace t with zero, and then you can replace displacement with zero as well. So really, you would have zero cubed plus two times zero squared, take away zero plus c, and that must equal zero because the displacement will just be zero. The object hasn't started moving yet. Therefore, the value of c must be zero. Perfect. And because the value of c works out to be zero, you can therefore say that the displacement equals, and it's just the t cubed, plus 2t squared, take away t, and you've got a plus zero in the end, which you don't need to write. So that is your displacement. We want the displacement after 4 seconds, so how would we do that? Well, we're just going to replace t with 4. So we're going to have 4 cubed plus 2 times 4 squared, take away 4. And if you work that out, you end up getting... Anybody got it? Perfect. 92. Brilliant. We don't know what the units are, so we're just going to write down units and just leave it as that. Velocity. How do we go about getting the velocity? Well, we were told right away in the question that the velocity equals 3t squared plus 4t take away 1. If we know t equals 4, you want to sub that in. So the velocity would equal 3 times 4 squared plus 4 times 4 take away 1. In other words, if you work that out, Jack, what do you get? Good. You get 63 units per second. And finally, the acceleration. We've got the displacement, we've got the velocity. How do you go about getting the acceleration? What do you do? Differentiate! Brilliant, you would differentiate. Differentiate the velocity with respect to time. So dv by dt. If we differentiate the velocity, we end up getting just 6t plus 4. And again, we want the acceleration after 4 seconds, so we can replace t with 4. So we'd have 6 times 4 plus 4, and if you work that out, you get... Good, you get 28 units per second per second. Yeah! Example 5, the velocity v of a particle p at time t is given by v equals e to the power of 3t plus 2e to the power of t. Part A, find the acceleration of the particle at time t, and B, find the distance covered by the particle between t equals 0 and t equals ln3. Ooh. So how do we go about doing this then? We are told the velocity of the particle is given by this equation here, and we want to first of all work out the acceleration. How do we get the acceleration then? If we're given the velocity, how do you get to acceleration? Brilliant, you differentiate. So differentiate the velocity with respect to time. If you do that, well, if you differentiate e to the power of 3t, e to the power of anything will stay as e to the power of anything. But what do you have to do? Brilliant, you multiply by the derivative of the index. Differentiate 3t with respect to t, and you get 3. So you would end up with 3e to the power of 3t. Plus, well, the 2 is just going to stay as it is, and if you differentiate e to the power of t, it would stay as e to the power of t. Just make sure, though, differentiate the index. You get 1, so you multiply by 1, so that would just stay as it is. So the acceleration is just going to be this. You cannot do anything with it. It's just going to be written in terms of t. Part b. What do we do for part b? Well, we're wanting the distance covered. And if it's the distance covered, really, it's the displacement that we're wanting to find. 
So if we're given the velocity, which you can see here, how do we go about getting the displacement? What do we have to do? Brilliant, you would integrate. So we're going to be integrating the velocity with respect to time. But what it says is find the distance covered by the particle between t equals zero and t equals ln three. So we've got limits for this. We're wanting to work it out between zero and ln three. So integrate the velocity between zero and ln three. It means really we're integrating that e to the power of three t plus two e to the power of t. If you do that, if you integrate e to the power of 3t, well, it will stay as e to the power of 3t. But because we're integrating, you would divide by the derivative of the index. Differentiate the index, you get 3, so you divide by that. We would have plus 2e to the power of t. Well, the 2 is going to stay as is. If you integrate e to the power of t, it just remains as e to the power of t. Nice and easy. And again, we've got these limits. We're wanting it between 0 and ln3. After that, well, this is what we had just on the last page. So you're now wanting to sub these limits in. So you're going to be subbing in ln3 just in place of t. So we're going to have e to the power of 3 ln3 over 3 plus 2 e to the power of ln3. Take away e to the power of 3 times 0 over 3 plus 2 e to the power of 0. After that, well, because here you've got a 3 ln3, you can use your log rules to bring this three up. So that will become an index. If you move that up, you would have e to the power of ln three cubed. So you need to do that. Also, you've got three times zero here, which is just going to be a zero. Just doing this bit at a time then. Well, from there, because you have e ln, well, one is the inverse of the other. So they will cancel out, leaving you just with the three cubed. Also, again, you've got this e ln, so the e and the ln, one is the inverse of the other, so they will cancel out, leaving you just with two times the three. Here, anything to the power of zero is one, so that just becomes one over three, and again, anything to the power of zero is one. After that, if you work that out, well, three cubed divided by three gives you nine. Two times three is obviously six. One third will stay as a third, but if you add on two, well, it'll be two and a third. So you write that down as two and a third. Work that out then. Well, if you add them, you get 15, take away two and a third, and that leaves you with 12 and two thirds. So really, you are asked in the question, find the distance covered by the particle between t equals zero and t equals ln three. Well, you know now that the distance covered will be 12 and two thirds units. And that's your answer. Try these questions in the Unit 2 booklet, page 54. Check your answers as you go. See how you are with calculating an object's displacement, velocity, and acceleration using differentiation and integration. Best of luck, have fun, see ya, bye. Vroom, vroom.